Everyone's been asking the same question since Rivian pulled the curtain back on R2. Is this the moment Gen 2 gets left behind? Is the hardware you already own about to become yesterday's news? After spending time at Rivian's AI and Autonomy Day in Palo Alto and speaking directly with the engineers building this system, the answer is far more interesting and far more reassuring than a simple yes or no. Autonomy is no longer a side project for Rivian. It's clearly one of the pillars of their future. That became obvious the moment they started laying out what's coming with R2. And honestly, they had to come out strong. R2 isn't just another vehicle in the lineup. It's positioned to be the volume seller, the smaller, more affordable Rivian that could outsell R1 by a wide margin. If that's the case, then autonomy can't just be good enough. It has to be competitive, scalable, and future-proof. That's why the announcements around R2 autonomy were so aggressive. The centerpiece of all of this is Rivian's new in-house autonomy chip called RAP1, the Rivian Autonomy Processor. On paper, it's an absolute monster. We're talking about roughly 800 trillion operations per second of AI performance from a single chip. To put that into perspective, one of the most powerful consumer GPUs available today, the RTX 4090, delivers around 1300 tops. In Rivian's new Gen 3 autonomy computer, there are two RAP1 chips on board. That means up to 1600 tops of potential AI performance inside a production vehicle. Now, there's an important nuance here. It's not entirely clear whether Rivian plans to use those two chips purely for redundancy or for parallel processing. If they're running in a redundant configuration, both chips are doing the same work at the same time, ready to take over instantly if one fails. That's great for safety, but it means you're effectively using 800 tops at any given moment. If they're running in parallel, you unlock the full 1600 tops, but you sacrifice some redundancy. Either way, even the conservative scenario delivers more raw AI compute than the current Gen 2 setup in R1. And that raises the obvious question, why does Rivian need that much processing power in the first place? The answer starts with the sensor suite. R2 carries 11 cameras around the vehicle, which on the surface sounds familiar. It's the same count as R1 Gen 2 if you ignore a certain experimental camera that never really made it into mainstream use. You've got three cameras in each side mirror, front and rear bumper cameras, two cameras behind the windshield with different fields of view, and one interior camera dedicated to driver monitoring. What's interesting is that these aren't just recycled R1 cameras. They're similar but subtly improved, higher dynamic range, small refinements that add up. There's also an increase of about 10 megapixels somewhere in the system. Based on Rivian's history of vertical integration, the most likely candidate is the interior camera, which was previously sourced externally. If Rivian now owns that design, it makes sense that it's where the biggest upgrade happened. Radars are next, and here we see another quiet but meaningful evolution. R2 uses an imaging radar up front, plus one radar at each corner of the vehicle. The difference is that those corner radars are now dual mode, capable of both long-range and short-range detection. In the current R1 setup, corner radars are mostly optimized for longer-range tasks like tracking nearby vehicles. Short-range capability opens the door to replacing traditional ultrasonic sensors for parking and low-speed maneuvers. Fewer sensors, less wiring, simpler manufacturing, and fewer things that can break. If the software is done right, drivers won't notice the change at all. It'll just work. Then there's the biggest philosophical shift, LiDAR. This is a major departure from the R1 approach, and it immediately sparks debate. Why add LiDAR now? The answer Rivian keeps coming back to is redundancy and edge cases. Cameras do most of the heavy lifting in Rivian's autonomy stack. They handle the vast majority of real-world driving scenarios just fine. But autonomy isn't about 99% of situations, it's about the last 1%. 
Cameras struggle in certain conditions, fog, heavy rain, extreme darkness. LiDAR and radar each have their own strengths and weaknesses, but together they form a system where at least two independent sources can agree on what's happening around the vehicle. That consensus is critical if you're serious about hands-off, eyes-off driving in the future. Rivian has openly said they're targeting personal level 4 autonomy, the kind where the vehicle can operate entirely on its own, even running errands without a driver inside. That's not something you gamble on with a single sensing modality. There's also another reason LiDAR matters. Data. Rivian already uses what they call their Penguin Fleet, vehicles equipped with extremely high-fidelity mapping and sensors to collect ground truth data. That data is then used to train their driving models. The limitation is scale. There are only so many Penguin vehicles and only so many miles they can cover. Consumer vehicles help expand that data set, but LiDAR-equipped vehicles take it to another level. R2 is expected to be everywhere. Far more R2s than R1s will be driving around in the real world, and each one of those vehicles becomes a data collection node. With high-resolution LiDAR feeding into Rivian systems, the amount of ground truth data they can gather explodes. That accelerates their data flywheel, improves their models faster, and benefits the entire fleet, not just R2, but R1 Gen 2 as well. Which brings us to the real concern most owners have, software, and whether Gen 2 is about to be left behind. This is where Rivian's vertical integration strategy really shows its value. Their software stack is built with a hardware abstraction layer. In simple terms, that means the AI models don't care whether they're running on Gen 2 or Gen 3 hardware. The underlying system handles the differences. This allows Rivian to deploy similar features across multiple generations without rewriting everything from scratch. It's also important to understand that R2 won't even launch with the full Gen 3 hardware and LiDAR system. That configuration isn't expected until late 2026. Early R2s will run on hardware much closer to what's already in R1 Gen 2. During a demo drive of Rivian's point-to-point self-driving system, the vehicle used was a completely stock Gen 2 production model. Nothing special, nothing pre-production, and it worked. According to the engineers, there's still headroom left in the Gen 2 system, and the software hasn't even been fully optimized yet. What we're seeing now is early engineering code, not a polished final product. That means for the foreseeable future, feature parity across R1 Gen 2, early R2, and later R2 variants is likely to be very close. The divergence really doesn't happen until you start talking about true hands-off, eyes-off driving. At that point, processing power alone isn't the limiting factor. Sensor redundancy becomes the deciding factor. Even if Gen 2 hardware could theoretically handle more advanced autonomy, it lacks LiDAR, and for Rivian, that extra layer of safety seems non-negotiable for personal Level 4 autonomy. It's not about what's possible in a lab, it's about what they're willing to deploy to real customers at scale. So, no, this isn't the end of Gen 2. It's the beginning of a shared evolution. R2 pushes the frontier forward, and Gen 2 rides that wave alongside it. There's still a long road ahead before full autonomy becomes reality, but everything Rivian showed points in the right direction, and for owners today, that's a far better story than obsolescence.